redox reactions involve the transfer of one electron or more. They're different from normal chemical reactions, because normally in chemical reactions, we worry about the rearrangement of atoms and the, the breaking and remaking of bonds. Redox reactions, we're talking about electrons actually transferring from one atom to a completely different atom. And it's called a redox reaction because that's actually a combination of two different words, reduction and oxidation. And these two terms are actually two sides of the same coin. You can't have one without the other. Oxidation is the release of an electron but that electron has to go somewhere. So reduction is then the acceptance of that electron. So a redox reaction is just an electron leaving something, oxidation, and being accepted by something else, reduction. Balancing redox reactions is really different from balancing a normal chemical reaction. And it can be confusing because of these differences. There are steps that you need to follow in the right order in order to successfully balance a redox reaction. So I'm going to go through an example using these steps. And if you apply these steps to any redox reaction, you will be able to balance it. So here's an unbalanced reaction. I know that it's unbalanced because I don't have my elements balanced. You'll notice I have two arsenics on the left and I only have one arsenic atom on the right. I have one nitrogen on the left, but I have two on the right. None of the elements balance, so it needs some help. But I can't just change the coefficients to balance this. Because it's a redox process, that won't balance it. And one of the key indicators is if you look at the charge. So the charge has to be balanced, meaning the same on the reactant side of the arrow as the product side of the arrow. So in my reactants, I have a neutral compound and a negatively charged compound. So overall, I have a minus one charge to the left of my reaction arrow. But on the right-hand side, everything's neutral. So my charge doesn't balance either. I would need the same charge on both sides. So this reaction needs a lot of help. So the first step to balancing a redox reaction is to break it into the two reactions, the two sides of our coin. We need to say a reduction side and an oxidation side. We'll balance the half reactions separately and then we'll put them back together to make the whole. So let's separate this. How do you know how to separate them? Well, you can do like with like. So you'll notice I have a compound on the left that contains arsenic and I have one compound on the right that also contains arsenic. So this has to turn into this. I'm gonna put those as a half reaction. The other half reaction is going to be this nitrate turning into this dinitrogen trioxide. They both have that common element in them of nitrogen, so they go together. Then I'll show you after I write them down how to figure out which one's reduction and which one's oxidation. So let's write the first one, which is our arsenic. and our nitrogen. Which one's oxidation and which one's reduction? You have to have one of each. If you don't, you don't have a redox reaction. They must both be present. The electron has to be released and then accepted. So how can you tell? Well, you can look at oxidation states. Oxidation states are a formalism that we use to try to figure out what's being reduced and what's being oxidized. To do that, we look at first each compound on its own and we think whether or not that compound has a charge. So this compound here is neutral. That means the sum of the oxidation states has to be zero for every element in that compound. Oxygen is almost always a minus two oxidation state. I'm gonna use that then to figure out the oxidation state of the arsenic. So I have three oxygen atoms, so that means this whole thing overall has to have a minus six charge. I have two arsenic, so each arsenic has to be able to provide plus three, and I have two of them for a total of plus six. So I have plus six and minus six for an overall neutral charge. 
This arsenic here is attached to four oxygens. Oxygens are minus two, so that's minus eight. Hydrogens are plus one. That means this is plus three. So what does arsenic need to be so that if it's added to minus eight and plus three, I get overall zero? It has to be plus five. Is this a redox reaction? Yes. That's because an oxidation state changed. So the oxidation state of my arsenic went from plus three to plus five. So that's definitely going to be a big difference in oxidation state. It changed. So therefore, I'm going to have a, um, a change in oxidation state. And which way did it go? It went from three to five, it went up in oxidation state. So that's oxidation. So if the oxidation state goes up, you have oxidation. Let's do the same thing looking at this nitrogen. It should be reduced if we did things correctly. So I have minus six because of the three oxygens, but I have an overall minus one charge on the nitrate. So that means that my nitrogen has to be plus five because plus five minus six is minus one. And then in this compound, I have minus six because I have my three oxygens but I have two nitrogens, and each nitrogen then is going to be plus three, but I have two of them for plus times two, and so six minus six is zero, and that's because this compound overall is neutral. So I went from five to three for my oxidation state. It went down. When the oxidation state goes down, it is reduced. That is reduction. So this was a two electron reduction of my nitrogen atoms. So this makes sense. My oxidation and reduction reactions are both present and I have them as half reactions. Now let's balance. You have to balance them separately. So the first step for balancing each half reaction is you balance everything that's not oxygen or hydrogen. So in this reaction, I have arsenic, oxygen, and hydrogen. So let's start with arsenic. I have one arsenic on the right, but I have two on the left. In order for my arsenics to become balanced, I need to add a coefficient. So I actually need a two here, so that now I have two arsenics. Down here, I have two nitrogens here and only one on the left. So I need to add a two here. Now everything balances that's not oxygen and hydrogen. Once you're sure you've balanced the not oxygen and hydrogen, you then move on and you balance your oxygens. But you don't add coefficients. Instead, you add waters. Whichever side of your reaction doesn't have enough oxygen, add waters to that side. So on this side, I have two times four, I have eight oxygen atoms. And on this side, I only have three. So if I add five waters, then I'll have five oxygen atoms plus three for a total of eight. So I need to add five waters to this side. Now my oxygens will balance. My hydrogens don't balance yet. I'm gonna get there next. Let's go ahead and balance the oxygens down here too. I have three over here and I have six over here. That's because I have two nitrates and each one has three oxygens. So there's six here, there's three over here. So I need to add three waters to this side. Now my not oxygens and hydrogens balance, my oxygens balance, and it's time to start balancing our hydrogens. We're going to do that by assuming we're acidic and we're going to add protons or H plus ions. So whichever side doesn't have enough protons, that's where we add them. So here I have two times three hydrogens. So I have six hydrogens on the right, but I have five times two, 10 on the left. 10 here, six here, so I need to add four more hydrogens on the right-hand side because four plus six gives me 10. Then on this side, I have hydrogens on the right, but I don't have any on the left. So I can tell right away, my hydrogens are going to be a reactant in this reaction. I have six on the right, so let's go ahead and add six on the left, okay. So now I have all of my elements balanced. So I have my 
my arsenics, my oxygens, my hydrogens. I have my nitrogens, my hydrogens, and my oxygens. But what's still not balanced is charge. This is where we get to actually add electrons to balance the charge. That's the final step in dealing with these half reactions. So we look at the overall charges on both sides of the arrow, and whichever side of the arrow is too positive, we add electrons to. We can also remember the general rule of oxidation and reduction. By looking at those oxidation states initially, we know that this original reaction here is an oxidation. In an oxidation reaction, your electrons are products. So they need to be on the right-hand side of the arrow. And that means they need to be on the opposite side of the arrow for the other half reaction, which is reduction. Reduction is an acceptance of electrons, so our electrons need to be reactants. If your electrons are on the same side of the arrow in both of your reactions, you've made a mistake and you need to go back and double check. So here I have water and I have this arsenic compound. They're both neutral compounds, so I have no charge on the left. On the right-hand side, I have a neutral arsenic acid, but I also have protons. Those are positively charged. So I have more positive charge on the right, and I am neutral on the left. So if I add four electrons here, then I've balanced out my charges. So four minus plus four plus is neutral, and I'm neutral now on both sides. Now I anticipate needing to add electrons as a reactant in the next reaction. Let's check our charges and make sure that's true. I have six protons and I have two minus charges here. Then I have two neutral compounds on the right. So if I look here, I need to figure out how to get a neutral charge overall on the reactant side of the reaction. And I can do that by adding four electrons. You've just done all the hard work in balancing a redox reaction because you have two balanced half reactions. To assemble this reaction back into a whole reaction, all we need to do now is add them together. And then we'll cancel out everything that's common on both sides of the arrow. In chemical reactions, the arrow is an equal sign. And so as long as you have something present on both sides of that equal sign, you can subtract it. And then it will still be a valid chemical reaction. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these together. I have all the reactants I'm gonna to put together on one line and then all the products. So we have five waters. We have our arsenic oxide. Then I have six protons. I have four electrons. And I have two nitrates. So that should be everything that was present on the reactant side from both reactions, now all together. Then I have my arrow, which is my equal sign, and I have two <laughs> Now I've written out everything from both of those reactions, and it's big and long and ugly. We're gonna simplify it now. Anything that's present on both sides of that reaction arrow can cancel, it can go away. The first thing you should look to cancel, your electrons. If your electrons don't cancel, then something's happened that's not quite right. So we have four electrons here and four electrons here. If they weren't the same, I would have needed to multiply by a coefficient to make them equal. So four and four, that means that my four electrons and my reactants and my four electrons and my products cancel out. I have four protons on the right and six on the left. If I subtract four protons from both sides, this four goes away and this six becomes a two. Now I have two protons. Then I have waters on both sides. I'll subtract three waters from both sides, leaving me with two H2O on the left. Nothing else will cancel, but you've noticed I've simplified my life a lot. So now I can write everything as a final reaction. All right, let's write up our final answer. So we have our arsenic compound, two waters, two protons, and two NO3 minus nitrate. And then that is going to go to two arsenic acids, 
an N2, O3, and that's it. Now, one of the last steps that people often forget, and this is a luxury, this is if you have time when you're taking an exam, for example, is that you can always double check yourself. A lot of times people forget to double check. It's not that hard. You just need to make sure you're actually balanced. So start with your elements. Two arsenic, two arsenic. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 oxygen atoms on the left and I have two times four, eight, nine, 10, 11 oxygens on the right. Go through each element and make sure it's actually elementally balanced. And then don't forget charge. So on this side of my reaction, I have two plus and two minus for an overall neutral charge. And then on the other side of the reaction, I only have neutral things. So you need to make sure that charges are equal on both sides of the arrow, in this case they are. So this is how I know that I have a balanced redox reaction. So if you follow these steps, you don't skip ahead, and you're careful, you will definitely be able to balance redox reactions of your own. What other chemistry topics do you struggle with? Let us know in the comments below.